Hello, my name's Andy and I'm Compulsive Gambler, last bet, 14th of April 2007. Hi guys and welcome to this week's uh, live gambling addiction vlog. Hope you've all had a good week, hope you've been gamble free. If you haven't, you go again. You can fight this, you can recover, you can get a long way down the line. This week has been very challenging for me, I've been on nights and uh, I am pretty knackered, I'm a bit all over the shot uh, body clock wise, but I'm getting there. I'm all this weekend of sleeping all over the plot basically. Hi Andy, hope you're doing well. Uh, hi Stephen, hope you're doing well. Yeah, so nights wise I've, I've been really really struggling with my sleep and stuff and all that a lot. I uh, went volunteering last night at the mental health cafe in Derby uh, for uh, Heads Eye which is uh, called Night Boss. Uh, a nice organisation there that do things do great things there so you can just drop in if you're struggling with your mental health. Some, there'll be someone there for a cup of tea and a chat and things like that and it's great to volunteer really I'll be back there again next Saturday and it's great to just have conversations and keep talking discussing about your mental health and things and stuff like that um, as you can see it's quite a nice day I've come outside again um, I quite enjoy doing a morning outside really so all good uh, I want to talk a bit uh, I've been talking a bit on Twitter but with one or two people um, we're talking about excuses and what excuses we had to gamble and uh, probably in a positive frame of mind what are the excuses not to gamble um, so if you've got any like kind of discussion points in the actual live in the in the live chat please feel free to bring them up and we can discuss them a bit more i mean obviously i've got my excuses not to gamble i'll lose out on my wife my family everything i've got move over my head and everything um i won't know where to go if i went back gambling again i oh, know well, I'll be spiraling out of control. This is what I see. I mean, a lot of people who go for probably six months, 12 months, gamble free, and they think they've cracked it. And oh, one, one quid won't do out, two quid won't do out. Before you know it, you're in that spiral again, gambling on anything and everything. And uh, this is why I say the first six, 12 months are important to make it as hard as possible to place a bet. Keep laying those layers of protection all over, all over, all over again. Hi Katie, hope you're doing well, Duck. Uh, Katie's got a fantastic vlogs out at the moment. She's probably got about 10 to 12 videos now, I think. Um, she's well worth a watch. Uh, all pre record so they're really good and they're really informative. And hopefully you can get a lot off, off from her. She's a very inspiring lady as well. I'd love to meet her one day. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in good spirits, really, apart from like the tiredness and stuff. I've got another week of nights coming up, so it is what it is got MOT on the car tomorrow and bits and bobs to pay for that as well so back in the day I'd been trying to gamble that and trying to get the money to gamble it all and try and uh, win it all without paying it back so to, sing, so to speak and stuff and all that like some of the bizarre things we used to do I mean I had a good discussion last night in there where, where I was at the cafe kind of thing with another gentleman just talking addiction not just talking gambling talking alcohol and drugs as well and uh, we're on about paying bills, I went on about the mindset where we've got, say, a £100 bill. Instead of paying it, we'd try and win that money and then pocket that £100. Never works out like that, does it, really? Like I say, it's all about building up them layers of protection. Financially, get someone to help you look after your money, for me. That, that was critical. Obviously, my wife had to take control of my finances, so I was lucky in that respect. Um, it's hard, don't get me wrong. There's also some cracking bank accounts out there. You've got Starling Bank and Monzo who block gambling transactions. Monzo go one step further as well, where you have to speak to somebody to reopen the transactions and stuff as well. So they've got like a bit of an insight on gambling and things and all like that. Oh, great stuff, Katie. I'm glad you had a lovely uh, day out. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to meet you. As I say, there's not many ladies who come out and be wide open with it and be honest with the addiction and stuff and all that it is hard to break down that barrier and hard to like to, uh, come out clean and stuff and all that but there's nothing wrong with anonymity at all so it's nice to see you breaking down the barriers to actually do videos and show women any, anyone can happen to anybody the addiction be it uh, like I say a young lad to an old fella young girl old old girl you know what I mean? Any anybody, money's relative as well. I could be having, ain't got a pot to piss in, got no job, no, nothing like that. Or you could be a multi-millionaire. 
everyone gets affected. It happens. The money is relative. It's all about reducing that time and re relaying that time, chasing that, changing that time to do something else, something you're passionate about. Obviously, I do a lot of running. I've been I've been keeping me fit all week, even though I didn't really want to, and and just crack on and trying to keep keep myself clean and especially in those first six to twelve months a year I had to change my lifestyle. I was a fat, overweight, unfit guy. I changed myself quite a lot. Exactly Stephen, keep yourself busy and get you out and, and got me out got you out in the open. That's brilliant Stephen. Um, feel free to share your channel on here as well, like give you links to it and what you do and what it's about and things as well. That's great, you can tell what Easter egg had. Hi David, hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself honest. Just keep opening up and feel truthful to yourself. Talk about what you, you're feeling, how you're feeling. You don't have to be about gambling as well. Sometimes we have some really low days, and I've had some low days. I've had some like, pig awful days, um, and it's not nice. I mean, I, str I used to really struggle to actually around anniversaries and stuff like that. So around the anniversary of my last bet, around the what the day when I got found out, the day where I'd like uh, try to end it all and stuff and all that. Like, I used to get really anxious, and by opening up and talking about it and say, look, this is where I was and stuff and all that, like, and I just got myself really in bits sometimes and like panicking over like days, and I've just had to look at it and really remember what I say. Just take it one day at a time. Hi Mark, hope you're doing well. Uh, I imagine bird washing is very good for your mind. Very mindfulness and very uh, pleasant and probably I'd imagine. Um, hi Katie, you watch ads for the and they're all... Yeah, I, t I totally get what you're saying Katie. I think you'll probably see a sea change with adverts over the next few years. Obviously there'll be some sort of whistle to whistle thing going off where during live sporting events apart from horse racing, which I can I can get because horse racing relies heavily on the gambling industry and I think that's fair enough but obviously I think around football, cricket and things and all like that. I did uh, read an interesting article, I'm not sure who funded the actual survey but it was a survey of 27,000 football fans from the NFL, so like the bottom three, the tiers two, three and four in, uh, in English football and uh, it showed uh, about 70% was alright with like gambling advertisements on, the, on, on like shirts and stuff. I think it was a bit less with like the amount probably getting pushed on like online and on advert on like TV and things and all that lot. But we've got to like I say we've got to remember we're in the minority of who's got a problem and stuff and all that. Lot. Don't get me wrong, there's probably discussions to be had, debates to be had and uh, as long as it's a uh, great dialogue with the industry and with each other as well, yeah, there's gonna be points where we've got concerns and points where we're not happy and stuff and all that. Lot. But through dialogue, through meeting, from cracking heads together and being good and just trying to come to a conclusion what could help. I mean, I'm a great advocate of people coming out clean with gambling and stuff and all that, like, but I totally get why people want to be anonymous as well, because they don't want everybody to know, and that's fine too. I think the more people who probably talk to the industry, probably be better, because right? they want to pick our brains just as much as we want to pick theirs as well. Um, at the end of the day, they are an industry that want to, they have got profits and stuff and all that lot, and to deal with and things and all that lot, and I get that totally. But with like the sea changes in like, there's a, been a lot of things going on about gambling addiction in the press and the news, especially in the last 18 months with the Fogtis campaigns and things like that, and the suicide rates and stuff and things like that. It can only be a good thing that there's some initiatives around responsible gambling. Um, I still think it's a long way to go, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not sure about that, Stephen. I'd like to say I'm not. I don't know the percentages of like where all the profits come from and things like that. I have seen uh, at first hand what uh, some gambling companies try and do and try and do around responsive gambling. Yes, and that. Yeah. I get what you're saying, Sean, as well. Uh, I won't say necessarily a fake pro profile, but what I'm trying to say is. Um, in a way, it's good to talk, and I get why people want to be anonymous, if you know what I mean. Um, 
What I would say as well, like you say with like these uh, opening up on the Twitter account by being anonymous, it took me nine years to be wide open about my gambling. I never talked about it anonymously either. Um, this is why, I, I mean, for me, when I see people like counting the days behind like an anonymous account, and I, I totally get it, you want to stay anonymous, that's fine. Um, just try not to put pressure on yourself. Probably just dip in and out for a while and things and all that. Like, that's just my take on it anyway. Um, everyone's recovery is different, but I totally get what you're saying, Sean. I'd love to see more people being open and honest, trying to break the stigma. Uh, of course, and that's what that's what it's all about for me, trying to like push down barriers, and trying to be wide open and things like that. Show there is no shame in having a problem, having a gambling addiction at all. Well done, Mark. Yeah, I know it was a very massive non-stop sports day today at. Uh, with the tennis, the cricket, I've, I've watched every ball of the cricket today and that was uh, unbelievable. And it was nice because it was like pure theatre as well. I've wa I watched it as pure theatre, but I'm probably 12 years down the line now. And I know people gamble still and stuff and all that, like, but it was nice to watch it without anything on it, obviously. And I imagine it was hard for you, Mark, but I'm, I hope you enjoyed the cricket for what it was. Because that was just a uh, once in a lifetime kind of thing. And how how, how the run of the ball went for England, that last uh, oval in normal play, last hour over or two in normal play was unbelievable. I think Ben Stokes was blowing out his arse, but he carried that team over the line, so it was brilliant to watch. And yeah, proud Englishman today, so all good. Anyone who's uh, from like America and everything like that, like, yeah, we are talking about cricket. It's a bit of a posher form than baseball, but a good game to watch. <laughs> That's brilliant, David, fantastic. <laughs> I could imagine more, like I could say, I, I enjoy the cricket, don't get me wrong. Uh, I haven't got Sky Sports, so I've not been able to watch it all or anything like that, like, but obviously I've been watching snippets of it. Uh, but I managed to watch most of the semi-final and, most the, and all the final today and stuff. I used to stay up as a kid watching the Ashes uh, overnight, because mum and dad used to have, one of the first ones to have Sky Sports when I we was a kid. And I remember going to sleep on the settee and kipping on the settee overnight on weekends and stuff so I can watch the cricket. So uh, I've always been a big bit of a fan of cricket just uh, obviously I'm a big football fan and stuff like that. I enjoy quite a lot of sports and I think that's another thing as well I enjoy the sports for what they are most of the time it's just pure theatre for me and it's great to watch great to see the experiences and stuff and all that lot <laughs> I can imagine you drained David but it's a good feeling of drained instead of the other way of like probably gambling and stuff and all that lot so to speak now just going back I was on about like excuses and stuff I used to always find it time to gamble, and uh, it was the wrong thing to do, obviously. And I was like, time myself, how long I can maximise, how long I can gamble for, like seven, eight hours, if I, how much sleep I can get by on when I was going to work and stuff, and all that. Like that. And you hear it, I mean, when people do slip. <laughs> no chance, Sean. No chance. Just remember, you're in the league below, mate. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say. Um, with the excuses and stuff and all that, like, I see it, I mean, when you have those slips and stuff and all that, like, it, and people say, oh, I, couldn't, I can't go through a meeting or I didn't want to go to that one-on-one -on -one session or anything and all that, like, what's stopping you? What's what's stopping you to try and embrace your recovery and things and all that, like, we find excuses quite a lot. I think me and Sean touched on this uh, last, last few days on Twitter. Um, we always seem to find an excuse to gamble, but find an excuse to always used to find an excuse to try and stay away from recovery, like go to GA meetings, etc. and things and all that. Like. And it's hard to like uh, get out of that vicious circle, so to speak. So there's no excuse to, to go and find help, because there is there. Obviously what I do with the vlogs and stuff and all that, like, I try and do it once a week. Um, what I'm going to be doing as well with this as well is going to branch out a bit, we're going to have a, two or three guests on and stuff as well, so I've got one or two people interested, one or two might be in the live chat as we speak, um, it'd be great to get people involved obviously with the vlog and be either a pre-record or, or a live vlog, that'd be even better as well, because I appreciate people have different points of view to me, so it's open to absolutely anybody who wants to join me on a, on a vlog and stuff and all that, like, if you're confident enough, if you want to be out there with your addiction as well, that'd be great. They, they stay on my YouTube timeline forever as well, so people can revert back to watch it as well. And it's great to have other faces on there who are addicted to gambling. Obviously, I've had my dad on before, and I've had my wife on before, and stuff and all that. Like. 
so to speak. I like to see that. It's good to see the cricket banter still going on. Sorry, I have to wet the whistle sometimes. Try and stay awake because I'm trying to keep in uh, in nights mode because I'm not back till Monday night. Um, but yeah, just keep. That's good, Sean. Exactly. Uh, as you say, you had to travel a 40 mile round trip to your so it was a proper good test. And it shows where you are now, Sean, in your recovery. Going to the meetings were vital for you, those sessions vital for you, Sean. And uh, it shows a mark of a man who's determined, who's got his head straight, got his head on his shoulders and stuff. And it's fantastic to see you recovering the way you are. And it's a fantastic achievement, mate, what you're doing. I mean, I've been dipping in and out of like a, a couple of Facebook groups over the last week or so and stuff, talk, talking to people from all over the world and things and all that lot. And it's good to see how people are recovering. You get other people as well who are still struggling. Don't get me wrong, they've been struggling for years, but they're still trying to fight it. There is hope and help out there for everybody. There is, have that determination, have that courage, have that strength. I mean, the serenity pair in a... GA is great. Uh, grant me the serenity to set things that cannot change. Courage to change things that can and the wisdom to know the difference. I think that's a great, great kind of little quote there. And there's some things you cannot change. You can't change the past. All the what ifs and stuff and all that. Like, and this is what I've been talking about again with a few people this week. You can't change what's happened in the past, but you can mould your future. Staying away from gambling, you can change how you are as a person, if you know what I mean. I would, Sean, but uh, with sport and stuff and all that, like with my kids and things and all that, like, I find it difficult to get to meetings. But if I was uh, available to go to meetings, I would still go every week, at least once a week or at least once a fortnight. Um, I enjoy my meetings as well, so I have, uh, I'm on nights this week, so I'm unable to attend. But when I eventually get a free night off, away from the kids doing stuff and things like that, because I've only got one car, you see, as well. And somebody has to stay home with uh, the other two as well. So, but I've got my recovery in check. I also got my literature from GA. I've put the other barriers up in place. If I'm not going to make a GA meeting, I've got my GA literature for one for that. I've got people to talk to as well, either either on the phone or through messaging on Twitter and things and all that. Like, I'm in parts of groups like Facebook groups as well. I try and put as many layers of helping as I can for myself. Um, it's critical when I first stopped, I was at GA every week for me, for my recovery. I know some people it's not their cup of tea and things and all that lot, but for me, like I say, that first year or two, I mean, I was pretty much weekly, up to eight, nine, ten years clean, basically, if you know what I mean. Uh, hi, Wonky, did you gamble a big loss? Of uh, as you say, well done, David, 50 days, gamble free tomorrow. Hi, Twonky, that's a good question. Uh, did you gamble a lot? Yeah. I gambled a lot of 60 grand credit cards and overdraft and stuff and all that lot. And obviously it's quite a lot of churn there as well. So I'd probably won sometimes as well. So I reckon over that period of two, three years, I was well into six figures I was gambling and stuff and all that lot. Light bulb moment for me, 14th of April, 2007, where about half four, quarter to five in the morning, I've just lost all in pocket two, 600 quid. So I went down to my cellar, as I used to have a nice, nice two up, two down ter Victorian terrace. Picked up an hammer and smashed my PC to bits, knowing I couldn't go on like this. And uh, that was my light bulb moment of thinking, I can't gamble anymore. I was running out of money and running out of excuses to gamble and, and make myself ill. So that was my light bulb moment, and I talk about them quite a lot. And it's quite a difficult thing to talk about, but when you're in those GA meetings or if you're in gam care meetings, be honest, be brutal about your life, be brutal about what you've done. You can't, like I say, you can't change the past, but you can mould what's in front of you and what you've got in front of you. If you've got a partner, if you've got children, if you've got a nice house and stuff and all that, like, look after your time. Your time's your biggest friend. It's the biggest killer if you're gambling, but for me, it's your biggest friend as well when you've got so much other things to do and things and all that, like, it's precious. And that's the thing that I probably hold on to most in my recovery. It's not about the, the money and stuff and all that, like, it's about all that time I had, especially if I did want to gamble. I had my energy so the first year or two, I was desperate to gamble at some points, but I had to get that laser protection in place to stop myself. Talk about time, money and opportunity, that triangle. Breaking one of them links, you're not going to gamble. Time's the biggest killer because it's the hardest thing to fill, 
I just think a break. Where's time and money? You can put layers of protection in there. Don't get me wrong, it's not easy. I know it ain't, but they're the ones to go after if you're trying to stop gambling. The time, like I say, as a killer, it can be a lot of boredom as well involved. I talk to a lot of young people who have problems with gambling and stuff and all that, lot, and that's the biggest thing for them. There's a lot of boredom going off, and what I try and say is, what, well, what other times you've got things to fill, fill your time in? Just be honest, be open about who you are. There is no shame that you've got a gambling problem at all. And I think that's the biggest killer, a big killer. I mean, for people who do, who do take their own life, it's the shame. Don't be, for me, like I say, I've embraced my recovery. I say there is no shame for my recovery. I hope uh, it's all right. Hi, Annie, I know you've just spoken on Twitter and stuff. The live chat should be up on the thing. If you subscribe to my channel, uh, Annie, you can pick it up on there and you'll be able to see the live chat going along at the moment as well. Um, as you say, David, you think you just had enough. you just got to be mindful, not be too complacent, because complacency is a big thing as well. Like I say, like I talked earlier in the vlog, that being six, 12 months in, you think you've cracked it, you think you've sussed it, you're not going to gamble anymore and stuff like that. Sometimes it can creep you up and bite you on the arse. As I say, I've talked about my boxing day. About eight months clean, I had £20 in my pocket. I was desperate to gamble. I was on my own, wife and child, wife and my eldest son were down south meeting family. And I wanted to gamble. It was biting me on the arse. And I had to do something quick and crazy to do. So what I do, I order Chinese and order 20 quid worth of it and stop me from gambling for that day. Do some bizarre things. I, I know somebody in their recovery. Hi, Gambling Sucks. Fantastic to see you again. Another guy who's got some great videos out as well. Give him a subscribe as well on his YouTube videos. A uh, very inspirational person as well. And uh, I did enjoy his Irish accent the other day when he was doing a daft video on Twitter. But uh, as I, going back and stuff and all that, look, fighting emerges. Don't gamble, obviously. I know somebody who was a few weeks in who was desperate to gamble on the football. Saturday afternoon was his thing. To take yourself out of that two hours, he went outside, did do the hole in the garden for two hours, and uh, in the growing veg, fruit and stuff and things like that, and uh, it took him away from gambling for that day. Day at a time. Don't pressure yourself into any target for me. Um, I don't take it. I just take it one day at a time. I had to drop the ego. I had to drop the vainness. I had to let somebody help me, control me. I had to be like a kid again at the start. Um, I had to be mothered, I had to be everything I needed. I needed all the help in the world to stop me from gambling. And all those layers of protection, making it as difficult as I can to stop gambling. It was great. I'm just going to go for a bit of a walk around. I've just dropped a cup of tea over as well, a clumsy sod at the time. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, hard to stay away. Don't get me wrong. I'm just going to catch up on some of the comments. Even though I don't gamble, don't know why. Um, as I say, Mark, maybe I know quite a lot of people who do do that, if you know what I mean. And for me, I can only talk about my recovery. It is uh, like leaving the lion cage's door open, but it is what it is. Uh, carry on. Yeah, as you, as you say, get help or you can help you can, David, from there and from the forum and the gambling community, that's fine. Uh, Nice to see everyone interacting with each other. If you want to drop your social media tags, please feel free to do so underneath. Obviously, I'm free to talk privately as well on BaronMad79 at Twitter. You can also search my name on uh, on Facebook Messenger as well. I won't take friend requests because I'm quite private with the stuff on there, if you know what I mean. Um, maybe, Mark, like I say, I know quite a lot of people who, who have messaged me for help and they, talk, they look at the streams. It's I get some, from, like I say, for me, it's not it's not really for me, but I kind of get like people are trying to replace something with something else. But if you know what I mean. As well, Sean, yeah, I like they check in horses and 40 streams. I didn't realise it could like, uh, stop the streams as well, Sean, that's good. And I do know, I, I have read on the grapevine as well what Gamba they're doing as well. They are trying to, I think they're developing more to the actual tool they have as well. And uh, I do know, I think, I think you can uh, 
self-exclude from Skybet through uh, Gamban app as well now because I think there's some sort of link up there so that's kind of a first as well um, I do uh, if you know what I mean Hi Cheesy, hope you're doing well mate uh, have you messaged me very recently? Um, I, have you tried on like Facebook Messenger or on uh, Twitter? Obviously I don't know your, your proper name or anything like that like if, I, if I'm wrong I do apologise as you say, Andrew Gamstap, another fantastic uh, tool. It's an amazing tool that is as well. I mean, obviously, I think it blocks about 98, 99% of websites in the in the UK. From what I was saying, that is ahead. Obviously, you've got the high street as well and uh, arcades and things like that. So there is various methods to try and stay away. I appreciate a lot of it's online now, as it is with shopping and everything else, because everyone wants that fix. Of, getting something in a, in a quickest short time amount of time the world's in a rush now and the world's closer than ever before and uh, this is why I try and do the vlogs try and bring everybody together so to speak and I'm just talking from my house in Derby uh, and I know hopefully there's people around the world watching these and trying to get involved if you know what I mean yeah uh, as you say there's going to be 700 less shops with the William Hill announcement yeah uh, someone said to me at work recently, I was going to the can you change this scratch card up? No, you have to be selfish, Katie, and you've got to remember your triggers and stuff and all that. Like, I, the other week I was at the, I was at my uh, at a football tournament from my, my son Liam, and it was £2.50 to get in because that's the way people run the clubs and stuff and all that, like, and you don't mind it because that money's going straight to the football club, and uh, obviously. I pay him two pounds. Oh, here's your raffle ticket. And I was like, you could win something like that. I went, no, don't worry about it. I gave him the two pound fifty and went, keep the tickets and all that. And uh, why, 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 and all that. Like, and, uh, with me being fairly open, I did say, look, I'm a gambling addict and it's not for me, so, so to speak. And, all right, fair enough. And no more questions was asked. But I, t I totally get what you're trying to say, Katie, and stuff. If you just say you can't and things like that, end of the day, you've got to be selfish in your recovery. And uh, I always I always have to look after myself first before I try and like talk to others and things and all that like and that's the way we have to be we have to be selfish in our recovery. You have to look after number one. And the further you way you stay out away from the bet, the better you feel, the better person you become as well. I was an angry individual if you know what I mean. Exactly, Katie. Correct correct. And I can't you don't care if she was you need to keep focused exactly you have to keep focused of your own recovery and the day it's all in our own hands nobody can do it for us and etc hi lewis nice to see you mate um the villa fan obviously we had a bit of banter before the playoff final in may uh, but i think out of the three promoted sides i think you'll be the ones who are staying up but uh i hope you're doing well mate uh we have talk uh to, it was nice to uh, talk to you, obviously, over the last few months as well, Lewis. Uh, I doubt that myself, Andy. We're back down for that lot. All oh, right, OK, now I've got you. Hi, Yolly Beth, hope you're doing well. Uh, nice to see you on here. <laughs> now, I think Villa would say up, mate, to be honest. Uh, if she knows, she, she should uh, she put super glue on her desk. <laughs> that's a that's a might be a way mark but some people don't understand what we uh, go through so to speak if you know what I mean and uh, I'm always like yeah take it or leave it some people probably say the wrong things and stuff and all that I like, know oh, for shit I've said a, long, a lot of the wrong things at times and think oh my god what have I just said do you know what I mean that's a good question Andy Andrew uh, what interesting hobbies did people take up to keep focus away from gambling Obviously, I do the running. As Stephen has got his YouTube channel with uh, the bird watching and things and all that. Lot. Yeah, doing well, Yoli. Hope you're fine. Uh, like I say, it's great to see everyone interacting. It can be anything you want if you've got an actual par actual uh, passion. If you've got an actual passion for anything, like a, a hobby and stuff and all that. Lot. It's all about like mindfulness as well. If you know what I mean? I mean, all I. I try and take half an hour out of each day just to keep myself uh, chilled and relaxed and stuff. That might be just having a bit of a 
and have a nice warm bath and or stuff like that, or go out for a half an hour run um, and stuff. Hi Dan, nice to see you again mate, I hope you're doing well. Uh, you started the gym, boxing, that's great stuff. Yes, I've noticed you like your, your, your animals and stuff and all that. Like I've seen your photos of your guinea pigs and uh, I don't think I've seen a photo of your puppy yet, but it's great to, they're keeping you on track and stuff and all that. Lot. Getting a body and mind fit is good. It's, in, it's imperative, especially the mind part as well. Uh, train your brain to be better and stuff and all that. Lot. Uh, talk about a lot of that as well, like gambling, people say gambling disorder and things and all that. Lot. And people... Uh, say they rewire the brain basically and stuff like retrain the brain and stuff I'm happy people like I say you recover in many different ways and stuff everyone got different routes in life it's all yours it's in your hands nobody else can do it for you you have to fight this it, like I say it's great to see so many people interacting it's brilliant and I love doing the vlogs and this is why I continue to do them every Sunday um, I will be Live for the next couple, next next couple of Sundays as well. Uh, I do have a holiday coming up in August, going off to Devon for the for a week, which is fantastic. It's great to be involved doing stuff like that again, and be able to afford and pay my own holidays and stuff now. And uh, the kids are buzzing for it and stuff. Um, obviously, my mum and dad. We'll be having the kids as well, probably the week after, because they live on the seaside as well, so they've got like two holidays in one. Um, probably we're comfortable enough now, me and Beck as well, to probably get a few days away on our own as well. So we're probably just going to leave it last minute, but it's great to have that feeling, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, off to Devon, Andrew. Like I say, I've never been to, I haven't been to Devon for a long time since I was a kid. Exactly. Okay, two being so hard at getting out, so do am drum performance stage shoes. Oh, that's brilliant, Katie. Oh, fantastic. Hopefully you'll be treading the West End soon, <laughs> so to speak. Oh, looking after you, that's the most important thing. Hi Lewis, to take get myself financially sound again, mate. Obviously I uh, use step change uh, for the first few years and stuff and all that. Look, I have still got debt, don't get me wrong, I'm about six, seven grand left but I've got it more than managed. I pay it off each month. I've got three creditors now, not like 12, 13 of them anymore. Um, I'm just financially secure-ish, so to speak. Obviously I rent a house and stuff, but I love to own my own house again one day and stuff. But it's all dependent and relative on what the money you have and stuff and how you want to feel and stuff and all that. Like, one more, what I would say is a lot of people try and get their debt down as quick as they can. And I think you've got to be careful with that instance in recovery because we end up taking shortcuts and that shortcut is to back to gambling again. What I will say is day at a time, if further along the line you don't have a bet, it, the debt's only going to go one way and that's down. As long as you don't gamble. I know it sounds like, I know it feels like a millstone around people's necks at times and it felt like that as well at the time when I first stopped and stuff and all that. Like, uh, but you have to cap, you have to uh, fight this kind of urge and stuff and all that, like, like the what ifs, what if I win, going back to the bill situation again, if you know what I mean. Uh, say if you've got a thousand pound credit card bill, oh, I need to pay it and stuff and all that, like how quick can I do that? And very, invariably, when people message me and stuff, it's wanting to go back to gambling and stuff again and all that, like, as Andrew says. For me, taking it slowly and rebuilding my life like that, I think that's the best way. For me, personally, like I say, everyone's recovery is different, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Brilliant, Katie. Brilliant. Oh, super. I'd love to see you, Alex. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Day at 19, got no time, and then try to. As you say, Sean, yeah, we try and do things too quickly, but we've got to walk before we run so to speak, in recovery as well. And walking's good all the way through, if you know what I mean. Chip away one day at a time, as you say, Darren, quite correct. you just got to chip away with it, take your time with it. Don't rush anything. Keep focused and stuff and all that lot. And uh, as I say, like, when other people talk about your addiction and things and all that lot, they're probably not going to understand what you're going through and stuff and all that lot. For me, I don't take everything to heart anymore. I used to at the start and stuff. Hi Darren, nice to see you buddy, how are you doing well? Um, 
but you just gotta keep chilled, keep relaxed. There's stuff that tests you, don't get me wrong. It's called life. And uh, we haven't been in that bubble of life when we've been gambling and stuff and all that. Like, you actually get back into it and get into the swing of things again. And, uh, it'd be great to like uh, just be normal. And life can be normal for the majority of us. Obviously, we're probably gamblers or gambling addicts or whatever you want to call ourselves. It's hard, don't get me wrong, but we can fight it. We can fight that and get back to leading a normal, positive life. Have that job, have that house, have that family. Being honest, just rebuilding that trust because that's the biggest thing you lose. Time and trust, biggest two things you, you've lost. You, well, you lose the time when you're gambling, but you lose the trust when you actually eventually get caught out or get come clean. And that's the biggest thing you have to rebuild. Becky won't hold my hand for months. She won't, what, she'd walk in front of me or behind me. And by being honest, being truthful and talking to her about what I've done and what I've done wrong in the time, is I had to be honest with her and say how I feel and stuff and all that. Like, and slowly but surely, that trust returns. Um, basically, obviously, where I am now, I've got my own finances and stuff and all that. Like, obviously, we've got a joint account and things and all that. Like, I'm over 12 years clean. My recovery is important to me, first and foremost. Obviously, my wife and kids and family and stuff are very, very important. I have to look after me. I have to look after that recovery. I, like I say, I love talking to people about the addiction, fighting the urges and stuff and all that. Like. <coughs> when, when did you stop going to GA and why? Uh, Lewis, I've never officially stopped going. It's just the fact that I can't manage to get there at some points. And uh, obviously when I get an opportunity arises, hopefully in the next couple, two, three weeks, I can get to a meeting and stuff and all that. Like, some people stay for a lifetime. Some people go for a bit. Some pe What I will say for GA, uh, only one in ten ever go back to the first, second meeting, so it has got a low retention rate. And uh, obviously, I'd like to see probably one or two little changes in it, as in like advertising where meetings are and things and all that. Like, that'll be a great help and stuff. But we've got to remember it's only a voluntary kind of a uh, thing, Gamblers Anonymous, and it's built up by volunteers. Hi, you both. I've had to do a paid out print out and show it my mum and pop. But just for them to see, I'm not doing any again for myself. Exactly, Yala Beth, that's brilliant. Uh, it shows and that helps rebuild uh, trust as well in you. And that's a fantastic kind of thing. Thank you, uh, Mark. Take care, mate. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, you stay strong and hopefully see you next Sunday. Um, but yeah, it's just great to try and keep that recovery going, so to speak. <laughs> I know what you're saying, Owen, there, but it is genuine. I've got kids, like I say, I have children who uh, do sports throughout the week now, but uh, they are valid reasons, uh, Owen, unfortunately. But you know me, I build up my layers of own protection. I've got my, as I say, I have got my group chats and stuff on Facebook. I've got WhatsApp groups that I'm, I'm involved in, one or two. Um, I've also, like I say, get involved with my vlogs as well and things like that and I've also got my literature I, I know my recovery sound and stuff and all that lot I want to get to meetings don't get me wrong it's not for the well of trying um, but hopefully with the football season coming to a close and stuff and all that lot as you say Owen quite correct meetings are a bridge to normal living and uh, being around other people who are sharing this, this strength and hope through their recovery as well is important and vital I obviously want to get to my meetings more often and hopefully with the daughters dancing finishing for the summer and boys probably have a few weeks off training I can uh, get to meetings and meet the people again who have led my recovery, helped me with my recovery again but uh, I'm not trying to make excuses so to speak it's just that life can throw up that many challenges and stuff and uh, I think my main barrier as well I didn't do uh, go go for any when January 2007, about three four months before I officially properly stopped gambling. I was trying to stop for about two three weeks at a time. I was doing quite well, but I was trying to do it on my own with no help or anything like that, and had the slips. 
every time I gam every time I got paid really, I started gambling again. And uh, but I've never ever stopped once. Don't get me wrong. I think any compulsive gambler or gambling addict will just say will say they never just stop the once, so to speak. When people are trying to stop and things like that, I think that's just that's just my take, hot take on it. Um, I reckon there's be other people in the track group chat now, in the live chat now, who probably say the same. Uh, if I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. I'm more than happy to say that. Exactly, I mean, I know people who still go to two or three meetings a week, 15, 20 years into recovery. I mean, uh, people have the once a week fix and stuff and all that. Like, uh, I, I, I know. I know people, if you know what I mean. As you say, you're the best. A lot of people just stop and never gamble before in life, and all of a sudden just go for it. This is why I think education is important, not just in schools and stuff and all that, but for adults, for people who are inside the industry as well. I think education is a very important thing. Exactly, as Darren says, gambling success, Lewis. Expect relapses, but learn from it and get stronger from it. Yeah, relapses happen, don't get me wrong, they do, and it's hard, don't get me wrong, but you can get there, put as many barriers in place as you can. I'm going to get it to 45 minutes tonight, this uh, vlog, because I am uh, quite conscious of the fact that there's a group at 9 o'clock on Skype. If you follow uh, Jeffrey Wasserman on Twitter, he has uh, like a problem Skype group meeting for an hour, and that's quite a, I've been in a couple of those, and uh, he's from America, so you get people from around the world, and you'll hear what other people have recoveries, and they usually do it around a bit of a discussion point as well. So give uh, Jeffrey Wasserman a follow on uh, Twitter, I think it's jdell1955. And uh, you can request to get a link to the Skype meeting, and uh, that's quite a good thing. The only thing I will say is obviously face to face. No problem, keep fighting the fight, gambling. No worries, mate. Nice of you to see you sign up, mate. Uh, you're more than welcome every time, and you feel free to message me privately, anybody if you wish, on Twitter at BaronMad79. Uh, if stay anonymous, if as well, if you want to, that's fine by me. If you want to open up and say your name and stuff, that's fine. I'm happy to talk at any time, at any point, at any length. As uh, Owen says, like you say, all depends on the person, and you just got to keep fighting. Obviously, before you have playing coin master, as it has a slot machine thing on it. As I say, yeah, uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, like. Uh, loot boxes and like skins gambling and stuff and all that like, and like in play games like that and stuff as you tend to notice stuff like candy crush it's like a little roulette wheel and things so there's elements of gambling there um i think there's some studies going involved in stuff and all that lot as you say lewis we were talking about that earlier as well um them kind of things happen lewis if you know what I mean, we think we nail it and stuff especially in those first six months 12 six 12 months and stuff and all that like it's all about trying to keep it focused keeping that recovery in check yeah as you say there's a lot of people who actually do stuff like that and it happens those relapses happen but it depends on how strong you are how much you want that recovery to go again and go again and go again and you can get there you can fight it uh okay you did dm earlier okay um, I'll have a look for you on there. I'm not sure, I'm not seeing no uh, Twitter messages on my thing at the minute. I'll have a look, I'll have a good look. Um, I'm not sure if you're on Messenger as well. Uh, no worries. I'll, like I say, I'm more than wide open with my account. So publicly or privately, if you wish, keep talking. Oh, I did get back to you. Okay, no worries. <laughs> no problem. I'm sorry, I do get quite a lot of like messages and stuff and all that like, and I do lose track of who's who from time to time uh, obviously uh, hi Owen, Lynn, stop and stay stopped is a big link some of us we make a few and don't get it right persist, as quite rightly Owen keep persisting and you will get there well I am going to leave that there now coming up to the 45th minute so thank you for everyone for getting involved lots of good discussion lots of good hope and strength in recovery I'll be back again next Sunday live from 8pm as I say, feel free to contact me at barrymad 79 on Twitter. I'm more than happy to talk, if you know what I mean. No problem. Thanks for getting involved. Take care, guys. My name's Andy, and I'm a compulsive gambler.
Thank you very much.